tutorial is designed to help new users to Captivate begin their first project. When you first launch Captivate, you'll be presented with this splash screen. You'll see recent courses, courses that you have been working with in the past, in the recent tab. Under the new tab, you'll see shortcuts to create different kinds of Captivate projects. And under the right hand menu, sample projects and tutorials, you'll see a number of sample projects and tutorials that are available like this one. To begin your first project, click on the new tab. Notice that there are six basic types of projects that you can create. Let's start with a basic blank project just to get going. Once you've started your new project, a basic set of windows will appear in Captivate. On the left hand side, you'll see a film strip that contains the thumbnail slides for each slide in your project. Captivate uses a slide paradigm to move from one slide to the next. On the right hand side, you'll see the stage area. In this case, the stage area has been pre-populated with a basic theme. The themes are provided in the drop down menu under the second button in the big button bar. When you choose the themes, you can choose from a variety that are provided for you right inside of Captivate. Themes in Captivate are also fully customizable, so you can make your own themes based on the themes that are here. When you apply a new theme, it changes the look and feel of all the slides in your project. To create new slides, go to the plus icon on the big button bar. Click on the slides button. There you can insert different types of Captivate content. Let's go ahead and just insert some content slides. Notice that content slides have master slide backgrounds. You can access those master slides over on the right hand side using the drop down menu. You'll notice that there are many layouts that are provided for you. You can choose from any of those layouts in order to create your content. It's also easy to create quizzes inside of Captivate. Click on slides and then choose question slide. A dialogue will pop up inviting you to choose the different kinds of questions that you'd like to ask in your quiz. You can choose as many questions as you'd like of any of the types that you would like. You can also determine whether you want those questions to be graded or included in an assessment score, survey or not included in any assessment score, or pretest, meaning that they're questions which are only used to pre-assess the knowledge of the learner. Once you've decided on the questions you'd like to ask, click OK. Captivate will automatically generate all of those slides. It's OK if you want to go back at any point and make changes. You can add more slides simply by clicking here. That includes question slides and all of the other kinds of slides. You can also move things around. You're not forced in Captivate to put things in a specific order. So if you want, for example, to move slide two down here after the first question and before the second, it's perfectly okay to do so. When you're working with your content in Captivate, you'll work in the stage area. You'll click on items to select them. When you click something, you'll see that the properties of that item appear over here in the property inspector on the right hand side. To edit something like text, you simply double click on it and the text area will become editable. If you want to change things like the font or the font color, the fill or background color of an item, all of those things will be in the properties of that item on the right hand side. Here you can see I can change this section of text to use a different font and leave the other section using the same font. It's easy to use Captivate if you keep in mind that you can make modifications to any of your slides and any of the slide content simply by changing the properties of items on the right hand side. You can also insert new objects into any Captivate slide. Here I'll create a new blank slide, a slide without any content on it. I'll insert some items onto the new blank slide. Let's start with shapes. I'll click on the smart shape and then choose a shape from the library of smart shapes. I then click and draw to create the smart shape on the stage. You'll notice that I'm able to change the type of fill 
and I'm able to change the coloring of fills, including using images as a fill. I can also change the type of shapes, and shapes come in basic groups. Shapes also have the ability to gain intelligence. You can click on this option to use as button, instantly turning a shape from just being a line drawing into an interactive multi-state button. That means that this shape now has the ability to become interactive. Items in Captivate that are interactive can be controlled using actions. Notice that next to the style panel, there is an actions panel. And in the actions panel, I can determine what will happen when an interaction occurs. When you click on a button, for example, that's referred to as on success. By default, Captivate will go to the next slide in the series. The objects insert is right next to the shapes menu. There you can see that you can insert highlight boxes, mouse paths, zoom areas, rollover captions, images, slidelets. You can even insert a web object. This is like a web browser inserted directly into your project. You also have the power in Captivate to insert pre-built interactions. These are interactive animations which have been built for you to save you the need for further programming. Captivate will open a panel containing all of the interactions available to you. You'll notice that there are a wide variety, and when you roll your mouse over them, you'll see that they are animated interactions. You can also insert various forms of media into Captivate. You also have the power to insert assets using the new Asset Library. Click on Assets to find more than 30,000 assets available to you for free with your Captivate subscription. The Record button is used to record audio in your Captivate project. If you click on the Timeline options down at the bottom of the page, you'll discover that each item that appears on the screen has a corresponding element in the timeline. These items are stacked in the timeline and they appear at the time code when they first appear on the timeline. Notice that the timeline starts at zero seconds and moves to three seconds. If I adjust these elements so that, for example, our smart shape button doesn't occur until one second in, then when the content plays back in Captivate, the web object will appear at the beginning and the Smart button will appear just after one second. If you'd like to preview your project, click the Preview button. When you're ready to publish content from Captivate, click on the Publish option. There you'll be able to publish to your computer a local copy of the Captivate project. Publishing for Devices app will allow you to publish an HTML5 based application for iOS and Android devices. You can also publish directly to Adobe Connect and publish to Adobe Captivate Prime, where you can deploy and track the results of your learning content. That's a basic introduction to using Adobe Captivate.